So what's taken Chiefs so long then? It's been a plan, a plan that they've been working on for a very long time. I think it's been hurting them, but I'm not to believe they had a plan of redemption. They were worried for eight years they haven't, gone, they haven't had any silverware, eh? especially with the league title, which is important to every team. But I think that plan of redemption, take coming, uh, the coming in of uh, Stuart Baxter, who we all thought is not going to do anything because we've been skeptical about all international coaches. But they is worked wonders. And he came in, he didn't change anything. All what he said to the players, he said, uh, intuitively I will create the creativity of all players. I will definitely guide them. I won't change anything. Play to your strength, and then we'll see. We'll take it from there. And it worked out for them. There they are, the champions of 2012-2013. Many people say that uh, the last couple of results of Chiefs haven't been that impressive, but they have been out and out the most consistent team in the league. What have they done right throughout the season? They have planned, like I said, from the chairman, who I know very well that he called in the whole team, management, technical staff, players, and told them this is supposed to be our, our year. We are planning to reclaim our glory. So we have to work together as a team, from management up to the players, up to the, the training staff. So they will, they will work together as a team, and then here are the results are showing today. Look at the results. They are the only team that lost two games in the whole league. That tells you they were working hard. I know there are matches that they won, not impressive, but I can tell you that you don't win every game being an impressive team. If you could pick out a player or maybe the one factor that you would say is stand out for Chiefs, what would it be? I must tell you their captain, Itumelong Kune. Itumelong Kune stand be stood between all the teams, all the 15 teams and, 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 and the, 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 the title. Absolutely. It didn't stood out for me. Yeah, he gave yeah. Spider-Man a new Absolute, definition. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. He's not, he's not number one for, for nothing. I tell you, he's the best. All right, now you speak about number ones. There was another team's number one that we're speaking a lot about because of his CAF Champions League antics. Let's speak a little bit about Pirates. Unable to defend their title this year, what happened for the Soweto Giants? <laughs> You know, well, and I, I can tell you, you know, that there is absolutely denialism about the, back, uh, the, the dressing room debacles. I think Roger Desai has lost it. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to realize that there is a problem with co the coach and the players. You see Munib Joseph, you see Benny McCarthy. All that is happening, it is because of the misunderstanding between them and the coach. And I believe that's where he lost it. So you think that there's a misunderstanding in the change room? You don't, I, I say from a distance, sir, I can tell you that he's lost it. He cannot just control his, 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 his players. So then how does that bode for the Champions League? It, uh, uh, no, uh, it's, it's, it's a pity that uh, the Champions League is something that everybody wants to win. So for him, it bodes well because the players want to win it. He also wants to win it. So that brings them back together to be a team that wants to win the Champions League because they're all looking for the second star. All right, let's chat a little bit about the team that Orlando Pirates played last night. Absolutely thrashed them. Black Leopards, they're facing relegation. Who do you see the team most likely to be relegated? Because the result from last night means that Leopards are going to have to win their next match against Free State Stars on the weekend which is going to be very impossible. You see, when you have two, a must-win game in your last uh, encounter, it doesn't bode well for your team. Lepers, I must say, they, they, have, they have to take the blame for the way they're running the team. For the past years that the Lepers have been in existence, they've never been consistent with their administration. They, 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 they've sacked coaches like it's getting out of fashion. Each, each season in and season out, uh, Black Lepers must have more than three coaches in a season. And that's not, that's not both well for a team. Hmm? Perhaps that's a lesson then for another relegation-threatened team in Chipper United. 
it's uh, the, 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 there is a propensity uh, violence that uh, appear clubs like uh, Black Lepers and Cheaper United. They think because they're in the PSL, so for them, they are supposed to be controlling everything, even the coaches. That's not good. This is, this is a lesson that most teams must learn, but I can see most, some other teams are not, are not learning from them. All right, lovely yeah. stuff. It's been great chatting to you about yeah. the PSL. The final round of matches <coughs> happens on the weekend. We know that it's Kaiser Chief that take the title, but who's going to be relegated is still the question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Violin. You're All right, so that's how we come to the end of our discussion about uh, the the PSL. We still got one more round of matches happening this weekend, uh, and that's going to be the final match. And we could see uh, Kaiser Chiefs, the brand new PSL champions, end with uh, that very magic mark, 60 points, because they're currently sitting on 57. If they can see past the University of Pretoria on Saturday at 3 p.m. Well, we've got a sports bulletin coming your.